Hi everyone, I am Nutrix, and today we're talking about the Mini Mode virtual plugin from Cherry Audio, which is a recreation of the classic Mini Moog. Uh, you know, it's a classic synthesizer. Everybody who knows about analog synthesizers know about the Mini Moog. But there's a lot of little things that people don't know, and they just like, oh yeah, it's a classic, but they might not know. So I'm gonna just show you one thing that is really interesting to understand when you use a Mini Moog is the fact that there is no LFO, but you can use one of the oscillator as an LFO. So oscillator number three can be an LFO. So let's actually look at this. So you've got this raw sound. Of course, you've got your three oscillators. You've got the volume of each of them. So if you bring them down, you just hear one oscillator. And then you get the different waveforms. So what's interesting is that what I like to do and like what a lot of people like to do about synthesis is to create movement. So either I have an LFO work, uh, the modulate, uh, either I have an LFO as in, you know, low frequency oscillator modulating either the cutoff frequency or the waveform itself. So you should be able to control the pulse width of the waveform or the pitch of one of the oscillators. So you go, okay, um, I want to use, here you get the choice between oscillator 3 and noise as a modulation mix. So the source of the modulation can be oscillator 3, and 3 is this one here, and you have this function here. Of course, you've got the same tuning as everybody else, but also go into low for LFO. Um, and then you can have it continuous value, so it's the same over all the key, so it's not key following, or you deactivate this and it becomes an oscillator that follows the keys. And you've got the shape, okay? So you could even do FM with this if you want. You wanna take the volume down of oscillator three because if it's an LFO, you don't wanna hear it. I've got these two oscillator one and two now playing. And I could detune one of them a little bit. Now you also have the number of voices. Put it at one. A real mini mog will be at one. But I want the uh... right away. I'm happy. You know, it sounds nice. But I would like the filter to open up and close. So then I would actually say I want to have the false modulation here. Turn it on. Yeah, well, I don't hear it, of course, because to hear it, you need to bring that up. This controls the pitch. Okay, let's do it again. Let's forget about the filter for now. That's for the pitch. Because oscillation, modulation is on, if I turn it off, turn this one on. Now I only hear this one. Too fast. You want less of it? So this is the depth of how much this is sent to modulation destination like this one here or this one here. So you want it slower? So really softly it goes through the whole thing. So if I turn it off. Yeah. 
So every time it changes a little bit because you're always moving the cutoff point. So you're... So really cool to have that very subtle way of having movement in it. Or the other way, like we said earlier, turn this off, go into modulation matrix here, actually turn on the modulation here. So now what I have is a movement in this. This one is moving. Actually, this one is moving one of these. get that type of sound that is really cool. If it's too much, sound really weird if you want to sound it weird and there's also the noise here totally the other side anyone more of this you go why does it sound like this well because you have now a noise changing the pitch of these two if I send it to the filter You'll hear how it sounds. Just bring that down. So it's totally a different type of, I would say more sound effect in a way. But again, if you bring that up, bring that down. So it can be so more like sound effecty in a way. There's a noise, you get a feedback side chain, and overload just show you that overloading. But the fact that you can use this, this one here, is really interesting. And the fact that you can actually send it higher pitch. Let's go back to oscillator three. And I'm gonna open up the filter so we don't hear this happen too much. We hear Okay, let's listen to this. Now, if I bring this up. Put that on, put that on. So we hear the LFO, okay. Now let's bring this here. We're doing some type of FM synthesis here because we're using an oscillator that is in the range of frequency we can hear and we're modulating the other one. So let's bring that down to a sine wave or actually a triangular wave and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Bring it down. We just have this frequency here open. Okay, we have this. Want it to be. We bring the pitch up with the modulation up. And 
then you can change how it's going to affect it. So that's why, even with a very simple layout, because you need to be honest, uh, Minimoog is not a complex synthesizer, but the fact that you can use the oscillator 3 as a modulator and the noise as a modulator opens up an option of, of I would say, weirdness that is interesting. That's it. Very quick, very simple, straight to a couple tips on how to use a Minimoog a little bit differently, and this time using the Cherry Audio Mini Mode as an example. And just as a finish touch, let's actually listen to some of the presets. That's it. If you're interested, check it out. Cherry Audio Mini Mode. Cheers.